the committee of the 31st International Conference on Solid Waste Technology and Management invited the internationally well-known Professor Sadhan Kumar Ghosh to deliver the opening plenary speech in the inaugural session on circular economy. The conference was held in Philadelphia, USA during April 3rd to 6th in 2016. Delegates from nearly 35 countries attended the conference. Professor Ghosh conducted several meetings to discuss various issues of waste management and circular economy implementation with experts from different countries. Let us now listen to his speech on circular economy. Very good morning. This is the content of my presentation today. So, you know, let us see first what are the challenges in front of us. By 2030, we will have 9 billion people in the globe, which is really a great number for the consumption rate by which we are consumed different resources in the world. Of course, the commodity price, this is rise in last couple of decades by 150%, which did not happen any time in the last decade. And uh, these are some of the issues which lead us to go for sustainable development. If we consider the West generation, then only in India we are generating around 62 million with a growth rate of 1.33%. And of course in US it is around 300 million tons with nearly 164 million tons going to the landfill. So there are great scope for resource utilization in the globe throughout the world. If we see the environmental challenges, we'll find that in all the spheres, like whether it is a carbon concentration, <coughs> atmospheric nitrous oxide concentration, region, methane, natural climate disaster, global division, everywhere we find that the power is steeper towards the end of 2030 or 2050. So this are really a great challenge for us. And if we talk about the resource consumption, we will find that around 73 billion tons of resources we are extracting every year. And out of this, more than 80% the annual raw material inputs are returned to the environment in the form of emission and waste. 50 billion tons is a global emission GHG and 10 billion tons as a industrial and municipal solid waste. So, it's a great scope to recover those wastes, wasted materials as resources and on the other hand, there is a great scope to reduce the consumption rate, which we talk about in the sustainable development. Uh, these are some of the, uh, of the statistics which I have shown is the global resource extraction and the benefits which we can accrue from not extracting the whole of the material. <laughs> There are some of the uh, statistics which I have given. Now, what is circular economy? Being a circular economy is one of the important tools for the sustainable development which was depicted in Rio Plus 20. And also, it should contribute to the eradicating poverty, sustainable economic growth, improving health, human welfare with decent work for all and serving resources and creating jobs. 
uh, this also was supported in the Paris COP21. The circular economy is one of the way for improving the sustainability in the globe. The Not only the COP21, the scientists, but also the business leaders, they also approve that circular economy is one of the very important issues which should be tackled seriously by the industry leaders. Uh, there are research gap. Now, if we talk about what is happening in the circular economy, the concept tells that a CP is considered these are all which we are carrying out in our activities. And this time, we are mostly taking care of the stocks. Like if you consider, then the parts manufacturer, then the product manufacturer and service provider, in this, we can see that there are two user and consumers who takes care of the maintenance, who takes care of the residual redistribution and also refurbishing. As a matter of fact, again it comes to the input. On the other hand, if we talk about the biological process, these are all biological nutrients for the circular economy, like uh, uh, the resource recovery, resource uh, uh, giving it to the biosphere, and also for the biochemical feedstock to again in the in as input to the manufacturing or the process. So this is the concept on which the whole of the circular economy is best and uh, this was a good research which was carried out in the European Union. Sometimes we call it as a second industrial revolution. see what is happening in European countries. Throughout the world, if you see how the circular economy is being implemented, then in some way or other, the circular economy is being implemented, understanding well or not understanding. Like the previous speaker, what he told in US, all the activities are centered to circular economy and of course what they are to take care is the reduction of the consumption pattern. What has been observed that in US, even in some other countries like China and uh, eastern part of Asia, there are a lot of food waste which need to be recycled or treated for taking care of those things instead of going to the landfill. But as a matter of fact, we have to take care of how to reduce the consumption pattern of food. That is very important aspect. And in, you know that in EU, there are a number of resolutions and also regulation which they have taken a decade long for uh, and implementing for a decade long program and some of the benefits I'll show you the resource efficiency flagship initiative, midterm review and uh, public consultation these are the program which Europe 2020 strategy for smart and sustainable inclusive growth in EU they have taken. This is uh, the shift from the linear economy to the circular economy and uh, the circular economy takes care of the issue that whatever is west from one process can be the input entity to the other process. This is the crux of circular economy. So as a matter of fact, the, the linear program is this, linear economy and the circular economy, after all, it goes to the input side. Of course, in circular economy, one of the very important thing is the redesign of the process.
we must design the process in such a fashion that the waste generation is minimized and the waste which are generated should be acting as an input to any of the processes. This is some of the enabling framework for economic package in uh, the European uh, community. Enabling framework, West target review, specific West challenge, and resource efficiency target. And uh, they have the design and innovation program, Horizon 2020 and many others, like unlocking investment, harnessing the role of business and consumers, and towards a recycling society invest as a resource. This is their program up to 2030. And uh, you know that uh, in EMIS also, there are a lot of work which they are carrying out uh, for achieving circular economy. I mean, we have, we have just heard a few minutes back the how they are implementing the circular economy in the food waste management system. And they have their set targets and all other. And as a matter of fact, by the resource efficiency, they have set a target of uh, achieving always a speaker curve with the time of 2030. This is a conceptual framework. And 30% uh, more GDP per ton they are trying to achieve as a target. And now if we look into the circular economy in, yeah, these are some of the photographs I have just shown here. And you know that this is the closing the gap. facilities and recycling, this needs to be enhanced. And now in Asian countries what is happening? If we talk about Asian countries, there are three countries which are well ahead uh, in the implementation of sample economy. Uh, the one is Japan doing for a long, long time. Then China and India, they have started. China has some of the resolutions also, regulations also in the country. And very recently, India has also adopted some of the issues to adopt circular economy. This is a framework for China. And uh, I'm quite sure that the ceramic industries uh, in China, they are also doing uh, good work towards the circular economy implementation. And uh, they have also adopted some of the resolutions in the last few years. Uh, if we talk about India, India has very recently revised all the rules pertaining to the West management, like uh, uh, municipal solid waste, electronic waste, CD waste, hazardous waste, and uh, plastic waste, they have rewound the whole of the rules uh, pertaining to all these areas in uh, 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 2016. And we were working for last couple of years, taking the experience of our long-drawn rules, which started from 1996 as EPA and uh, MSW rule, Municipal Solid Waste Rule 2000, and then all other rules, which were enacted in 90s. We have now taken off all the rules, and this has been released. This has been released in last month. 
our one of the prime uh, force, driving force for all these rules are circular economy. So as a matter of fact, we expect in India that in a couple of years we will achieve the concept of circular economy as implemented in various forms uh, very nicely and effectively. But uh, China has already achieved uh, quite a large amount of results by implementation of circular economy for last one decade. Japan, they have uh, recycled, the country recycles 90% of its metal in 2007. And you know that Japan is one of the pioneer countries in Asia in the implementation of circular economy. I'm coming to the conclusion that there are many countries who have different legislation for uh, West minimization, West or reduction, like the concept of three R implementation. And as a matter of fact, those who are the decision makers must take the advantage of the concept of circular economy. But with the traditional concept for last 50 years, there are many people who think that circular economy implementation is not possible. But of course, we will start, and I'm quite sure that definitely it is not 100 percent, but at least 80 to 85 percent of the implementation of such a economic concept is possible to any of the countries. And uh, these are the way forward: consensus, collaborative approach, and common understanding. With this, I conclude my speech. But with this. I'll also invite you all to the 6th International Conference on Solid Waste Management 2016, which will be held in Kolkata, India, from 24 to 26 November 2016 in my university. And we are expecting around 700 to 900 delegates from 30 to 35 countries. It's the biggest conference in India, and I request all of you to join there. And there is an incentive for the people who attended this conference. Uh, those who will be registering before 15th of September for this conference, we will provide them free accommodation in our university guest house for this uh, three or four days. So hurry up. The last date for submission of abstract is 15 May and full paper is 15 With this, I thank you very much for your patient hearing and also I uh, wish a great success for the conference in US 11. Thank you very much.